Long, long ago in ancient India, there lived a just and noble king named Ashwapati, the king of Madradesha. His wife's name was Malavi. They had no children. And so they performed religious rites and worshipped goddess Savitri. the mother god asking her to grant them a child. A few years passed yet the goddess did not answer their prayers. But the couple did not give up the attempt and continued their religious rites. After 18 years passed, Goddess Savitri, who was very pleased with them, appeared before the couple. Thank you, Mother, for your mercy. I am immensely happy. I have everything and I am happy with my wife. My subjects and my courtiers serve me with love. But I have no children. After me, there is no one to protect this country. Mother, I want children to protect my dynasty. Ashwapati, nothing can happen without the will of Lord Brahma. You will have a beautiful daughter. That is Brahma's will. She will have all the noble qualities. Thank you, Mother. I am greatly blessed. The goddess blessed the king and disappeared. After few days, Ashwapati's wife gave birth to a daughter. As she was goddess Savitri's gift, she was named after the goddess herself. Savitri grew up to become a maiden of charm, modesty and matchless virtue. She looked as lovely as a goddess. After a few years, her father decided to get her married. Many youths sought her hand. Strong men, brave men, good and modest men. But every prince felt that he was not worthy enough to marry her and withdrew from the Swayambara, which was the ritual through which kings and queens were married in the ancient times. Savitri, my child, it is time for you to get married. But no prince is coming forward as everyone feels that they are not worthy enough to marry you. I will make arrangements for your journey. You shall leave this kingdom and find a suitable husband for yourself. My lord, how can I go alone? What will the people think of me? My dear child, I am proud of you. But you are not doing anything wrong. 
you are merely going in search of a suitable bridegroom for yourself. Please make arrangements for your journey. Our maid servants will accompany you. Do not worry. Savitri left the kingdom accompanied by her servants and companions and Ashwapati's old minister. They visited many kingdoms. and received blessings from great sages. Savitri gave alms and generous gifts to the poor and the needy. But she did not meet anyone who won her heart. Savitri began the journey back home. On the way, they came across a forest. They saw an old couple under a tree. Near them was a young man absorbed in work. He was peeling fruits and offering them to the old couple. Savitri watched them. The young man's face was gentle, full of compassion and righteousness. Savitri gazed at him for a long time, even forgetting to blink. She lost her heart to the radiant, handsome youth. Minister, look at the old couple and the young man under the tree. Please find out who they are. My son, who are you? Who is this old couple? Why are you here in this forest? My name is Satyavanta and these are my parents. My father, Dhyumit Sena, was once the king of Salvadesha. He lost his eyesight in a battle. His enemies targeted our kingdom and my blind father was easily defeated and so we had to leave the kingdom and live in the forest. The minister went back to Savitri. and reported what he had learned. The youth's dignity had impressed Savitri at the very first glance. When she heard the minister's words, she concluded that Satyavanta was a good and noble youth and decided to marry him. Her task was done and the choice was made. And so 
she returned to Madradesha. By the time Savitri returned to the palace, Sage Narada, the greatest saint and an ardent devotee of Lord Vishnu, had arrived there. He could understand the past and foretell the future. He knew everything because he wandered all the three worlds, earth, heaven and the lower world. Ashwapati welcomed Narada with great respect. He washed Narada's feet with devotion and worshipped him. Just then Savitri returned to the palace. She bowed down to sage Narada and to Ashwapati. Maharaja, where has your daughter been all this time? You are fortunate to have such a daughter. Have you thought about getting her married? I had sent her to choose her husband, O oh noble sage. My child, please tell me who has won your heart. Father, I visited all the countries and met many important men, yet I was not impressed with anyone. At last we came to a forest where I saw a young man called Satyavanta. His father is Dhyumatsena who was the king of Salvadesha. Now he has lost his eyesight and his kingdom and is living in the forest. I am greatly moved by Satyavanta. I want to marry him. Ashwapati looked at the great sage Narada and waited for his reply. He wanted to know Narada's opinion on his daughter's choice. O oh king, your daughter's choice is excellent. This young man always speaks the truth and that is why he is called Satyavanta. From his childhood he loved horses. So he has another name also, Chitrashwa. He is radiant like the sun intelligent, handsome and extremely patient. He is generous, valiant, friendly and free from envy. My Lord, I am very happy to hear your words as you are the wisest of all sages. You have told me what is commendable in Satyavanta, but is there any reason why my daughter should not marry him? Narada looked confused. Great sage, Please forgive me if I have said anything wrong. Ashwapate, Satyavanta has no shortcomings. He is resplendent with virtues. But fate is against him. He has a short life. His life will come to an end exactly a year from this day. Ashwapati was shocked. Savitri, your choice is excellent. The man you have chosen, Satyavanta, is a wise and intelligent man. But, my child, he has a short lifespan. How can I let you marry him when I know this fact? Please choose anyone else. I will gladly give you away in marriage to him. Father, I have made my choice. Whether Satyavanta will have a short or long life, he will be my husband and I will be his wife. Savitri, you are still very young. Do not be hasty. Think for a while. Terrible sorrows await you after a year. Father, do not think that I am disobedient. Long-lived or short-lived, Satyavanta alone will be my husband. I will not change my mind. My Lord, I beg you to advise my daughter. Ashwapati, your daughter has made up her mind. Besides, no one has so many virtues as Satyavanta. In every way, he is the right match for your daughter. Let this marriage take place. All will end well. Ashwapati did not want to go against the wishes of his daughter and the blessings of Narada gave him some courage. On an auspicious day, Ashwapati travelled to the hermitage of Dhyumat Sena with some of his courtiers. He met Dhyumat Sena and inquired about his welfare. 
he was awestruck to see the handsome and radiant Satyavanta. Dear King Dhyumatsena, greetings to you. This is my daughter Savitri. I beg you to accept her as your daughter-in-law. Maharaja, we have lost our kingdom and are now in the forest. How can your daughter Savitri face the troubles of life in the forest? Can she live here? Dear King, please accept my daughter as your daughter-in-law. Under your protection and love, she will forget all the hardships she will have to endure. I am sure that my daughter will prove worthy of your affection. Even before you came here, I had wished for this match. But we have lost our kingdom and are living in a forest. How could I have asked you for her hand in marriage? My lord, I am greatly honored to give my daughter to your son. The marriage of Satyavanta and Savitri was celebrated. They became husband and wife. Savitri rejoiced that she could marry the man who had won her heart. Satyavanta was extremely happy that he had such a lovely, good and noble wife. Ashwapati had spent 18 long years in prayers to be blessed with Savitri as his daughter. It was not easy for him to remain separated from his daughter. He returned to his kingdom with a heavy heart. Savitri and removed all her sparkling jewelry. She happily served her father-in-law and mother-in-law and her cheerful and smiling disposition won everyone's heart. She became Satyavanta's beloved wife. But she could not forget Narada's words even for a moment, not even in her dreams. Her mind was always chained to Narada's words. Ten months passed. As days flew by, she grew more and more terrified. Though her heart was heavy with sorrow, she did not forget her duties and didn't show any outward signs of her distress. Soon, the eleventh month passed and only a month remained. Only four days were left in Satyavanta's life. Savitri spent three days in religious rites of the most rigorous kind. She fasted for three days. She was determined not to drink even a drop of water. She worshipped Goddess Savitri day and night. She begged the Goddess who had blessed her father to protect her husband. My daughter Savitri, why have you undertaken such rigorous rites? Isn't it difficult for you to fast for three days? Father, please bless me. Please pray that my religious rites will go on without any obstacles. Please do not ask me to give them up. The last three days too passed. The day that she feared most, the very thought of which made her soul shiver, dawned. She could not rest in one place, she kept moving restlessly. There was a mine of anguish in her heart, but even through all her agony, 
Savitri did not forget her daily duties. She assisted the elders in the worship of the family deities and served her in-laws food. She then bowed down and touched their feet, all the while knowing that Satyavanta's death was so close. As usual, Satyavanta started for the forest to hew trees and collect firewood. But on that day, Savitri could not bear separation from him. My Lord, I wish to come to the forest with you today. I want to see the beauty of the forest and I want to help you with your work. Please do not say no. My dear, I shall be delighted to have your company. But after three days of strict religious rites, you must be feeling tired and weak. You still haven't eaten anything and it is not easy to walk in the forest. Why come today? You can come with me after your rites are over. I want to see the flowers blossoming in the forest and hear the songs of birds. I want to come today. Savitri, I don't want to deny you anything. If it makes you happy, I will not stop you. I will also be happy if you are with me. Go and tell your in-laws and get their permission. Savitri went with her husband to the forest with her elders' permission. Although she spoke cheerfully throughout, her heart ached within her. Satyavanta was delighted to have Savitri with him. He walked with greater liveliness than ever before and pointed out the beauty of the forest. Together, they collected flowers and gathered fruits. Satyavanta made Savitri sit under a tree and started chopping the wood. Suddenly, Satyavanta started perspiring and his head began to ache terribly. Savitri! Savitri! Savitri sprang to her feet and raced to him. Savitri, I have a dreadful headache. I can't bear it. My body is perspiring and I feel as if my head is about to burst. My lord, you are very tired. You have been cutting wood all day. Your headache will go if you rest for a while. Lie down with your head in my lap. Savitri took her husband's head in her lap. The next moment, the dark, mighty figure of Yama, the god of death, appeared near Satyavanta's feet. Savitri laid her husband's head on the ground and stood up. Lord, who are you? Why have you come here? Yamadharma Raja, the god of death, was not visible to ordinary people's eyes. But as Savitri was deeply devoted to her husband and had performed many rigorous religious rites, she could see Yama. My daughter, I am Yama, the god of death. Today your husband's life has come to an end. I have come here to take his soul away. I am visible to your eyes and I have answered your question only because of your spiritual power. Yamadan Maraja tied up Satyavanta's body with his leash. At once, Satyavanta's soul left his body. Yama began walking away. He traveled a short distance and looked back to see that Savitri was following him. Yama was astonished. He and his followers had taken away millions of lives away, but no one had followed the dead. He admired the courage of the woman who was following him. Savitri, you have followed your husband as far as possible. You were like a shadow when he was alive. Now, turn back. Your ties with him have been severed. Go and perform the last rites for his body. It is said that if we walk seven steps with a person, he becomes a friend. I have come with you all this distance. Therefore, now you are my friend and I want to speak to you as a friend. People perform rites in a forest for knowledge and dharma. Wise men say that dharma is greater than anything else. 
It is my dharma to be with my husband and I cannot give this up. Savitri, your words have pleased me immensely. Ask for any boon except your husband's life. I will grant it. Dharma Raja, you have truly blessed me. I will not ask for anything for myself. By your grace, make my father-in-law regain his eyesight. Yama was very much pleased to see that Savitri had such great affection for her husband's parents. Your wishes will be fulfilled. Now go back. You must be tired. Lord, how can I feel tired when I am near my husband? I only want to be with him. My daughter, your words give me great joy. I am immensely pleased. Ask for some other boon, but do not ask for your husband's life. My Lord, if you are pleased with me, then please let father-in-law regain his kingdom. So be it. Now go back and do your duty. Yamadhar Maharaja, you bind everyone with a single uniform law. You do your duty, never going against that law. This is why you are called Dharma Raja, the Lord of Righteousness. I beg of you to listen to me. The good are kind even to their enemies. This is my faith and my true belief. My daughter, your words are as sweet as nectar. Ask for any boon except Satyavanta's life. My Lord, grant that my father may have valiant sons so that his dynasty will continue. As you wish. Your father will have good sons. You have followed me very far. Now, go back. It is not at all far for me when I am near my husband. You are so kind. My child, I have not heard such words from anyone else. Ask for any boon except your husband's life. I will give it to you. My Lord, I am fortunate enough to have received such kindness from you. I pray that Satyavanta and I may have children who are strong and who will bring fame to our dynasty. So be it. Now you definitely must be tired. Return, my child. My Lord, the good always walk the path of righteousness. They will not give up the truth, no matter what difficulties lie ahead. They never do what is unrighteous and help others expecting nothing in return. My child, your words are so noble. They have profound meaning. As I listen to you, my regard for you deepens. Ask for a great boon. Whatever you shall wish for will be fulfilled. My Lord, I pray that your boons may be fulfilled in a virtuous way and in a righteous manner. I am praying for my husband to come back to life. I am dead without him. I do not want heaven or wealth without my husband. May your words come true. This is the boon I beg for. Yamadar Maharaja was defeated by Savitri's arguments. My daughter, I will give back your husband's life. He will be healthy and strong. He will live for 400 years and will walk the path of virtue. You and your husband will live happily with your children. Your children will come to be known as Savitris after you. Your father also will have sons and they will be known as Malvas after your mother. By your devotion and by the religious rites you performed, your dead husband will come back to life. No one can equal you. Now return, my child. Savitri was overjoyed. My Lord, your mercy is boundless. You have blessed me. Thank you, my Lord. Yama returned to his kingdom. Savitri came to the place where Satyavanta lay on the ground.
she took his head in her lap as before. As life returned to Satyavanta, a joy flooded Savitri's heart. Ah, uh, ah, uh, what is this? When I fell asleep, it was daylight. Now it has become dark. How could I have fallen asleep for so long? My dear, while I was sleeping, I saw a dark figure in my dreams. Who was he? Did you see him? My dear, you did sleep for a long time. That dark figure you saw was none other than Yamadharma Raja. All living creatures obey him. He has gone. If you can walk now, let us go back to our home. I felt as though the dark figure carried me away with him. Did that happen or was it only a dream? Tell me, Savitri. My dear, it's so dark that our eyes cannot make out anything. I will tell you everything tomorrow. We came to the forest to collect fuel. We have not returned home though night has fallen. By this time, your father and mother will be worried about us. You can hear the rustle of dry leaves as wild animals move about. The darkness fills me with fear. Come, let us go home. It is so dark I cannot see the way. How can we find the way back home? Uh, how will we reach our home? By then, a fire had broken out in the forest. Savitri was able to light some firewood with this. Savitri, I have never before stayed away from home for such long hours. Even when I left the hermitage for many hours during the day, my parents would worry about me. They used to come in search of me. I do not know what has happened to them today. If anything happens to them, I will not be able to live with myself. All this anxiety is because of my wretched sleep. Savitri consoled her husband with soft words. She thanked the gods. In her heart, she bowed to them and prayed. Satyavanta walked fast and Savitri kept pace with him. In the hermitage, Dhyumat Sena became anxious and alarmed because Satyavanta had not yet returned. But all of a sudden, his sight was restored. He could see clearly. His joy knew no bounds. But even at that momentous time, he was worried that his son had not yet returned. Husband and wife were both filled with fear of what must have happened to their beloved daughter-in-law Savitri. Just then, Savitri entered with her husband. Everyone there was filled with excitement and delight when the young couple finally returned. Why have you both returned so late? What happened? I was splitting the wood in the forest. All of a sudden, I had a severe splitting headache, so I had to lie down. When I woke up, it was midnight. Though it was dark, we made our way back here because we knew you would all be worried. Satyavanta, your father has got back his eyesight. It is a joyous day, but there must be some other reason for your delay. Savitri must know the reason. My child, Savitri, tell us what happened. Your face is bright as a moon. What you are saying is true. I have nothing to hide. I will tell you what happened. Sage Narada told me a year back that my husband's life would come to an end today. But by then I had lost my heart to Satyavanta. Without the slightest hesitation I married him. That is why I went to the forest with him today. In the forest while he was cutting wood, Satyavanta lay down because of an unbearable headache. Then Yama came there and snatched away his life. I followed Lord Yama and I praised him 
with words of truth. Yama was greatly pleased to hear my words and he graciously granted me five boons. Two boons were that my father-in-law would regain his eyes and his kingdom. The other two boons were that my father would have sons and I too would have sons. The fifth boon was that both Satyavanta and I would live for 400 years. I have been performing religious rites for three days. I performed the rites so that my husband might overcome death. All my sorrows have vanished and happiness has dawned. The danger was averted with the blessings of Goddess Savitri and all of you, my elders. It's a miracle. Long live devoted Savitri! Long live devoted Savitri! Long live devoted Savitri! My dear princess, you are my love and my life. I thank the Almighty for blessing me with a wife as wonderful as you. Satyavanta hugged Savitri with tears in his eyes. When they learned from Savitri all that had happened, her in-laws were filled with amazement and their joy knew no bounds. With hearts overflowing with joy and admiration, they blessed Savitri. They honored her as the savior of her father-in-law's family, a great and pure woman and a wife of perfect devotion. What might have been a sorrowful night turned into an auspicious and joyful night. Slowly the night passed and the sun rose. Suddenly they saw a big crowd at a distance. Leading the crowd was a man on horseback. They were all filled with curiosity. As he approached, the rider descended from the horse and bowed down to Dumat Sena with great respect. He had been Dumat Sena's minister while he was the king. My lord, I have brought joyful news for you. I defeated your enemy in a war. The people are eagerly awaiting your arrival. My subjects' wish is my wish and service to my people is my joy. By God's grace and by Savitri's spiritual powers, I have got back my eyesight. Let us make preparations at once to return to our capital. Saying this, Dhyumat Sena traveled to his capital with all the royal honors. Once reinstated in his kingdom, Dhyumat Sena became the Maharaja, the king, and Satyavanta became the Yuvaraja, the crown prince, and they ruled the kingdom happily.